Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second day, uh, second Sunday of Advent. Um, Reverend Bob couldn't be with us today because unfortunately he's got a cold and uh, he had to come back early from his vacation. So you're stuck with me again. Um, this morning, the uh, hanging of the green service, a little different service, and um, be uh, readings and singing. Um, no sermon, yay. <laughs> if you would uh, maybe stand and join me in the call to worship, please. It's printed in your bulletin. How can we prepare this sanctuary for the coming of Jesus the King? With branches of cedar and tree of royalty. How shall we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the eternal Christ? With garlands of wreath of pine and firm whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the Son of God? By hearing again the words of the prophets who foretold the saving work of God. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All glory to God in the highest. Would you remain standing while we sing one verse of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus? Hey. may be seated. The Christmas poinsettia, Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The poinsettia speaks to us symbolically in several ways. The star-shaped formation of ten leaves calls to mind the star which shone that first Christmas. In a less joyous sense, the color of the flower is blood red, reminding us of the male infants killed because King Harold wanted to eliminate any threat to his throne. We sometimes forget this part of the story, which made it necessary for Mary, Joseph, and the Christ child to flee to Egypt. You can remain seated and we'll sing one verse of page 216, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
The Advent wreath is from Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The Advent wreath is a vivid symbol of preparation. The lighting of the new candle each of the four weeks before Christmas reminds us that something is happening, but more is yet to come. The circle of evergreens reminds us of the everlasting covenant offered in the birth of Christ. The four candles symbolize hope, peace, joy, and love. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. And we'll sing one verse of People Look East 202. You can remain seated. If you'll turn in the faith we sing to page 2090 and we'll sing the second verse of light the advent candle The second week of Advent, we remember the gift of peace that we have in Christ. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for and must work for. God gives us the gift of peace when we turn to him working together in faith. Through John the Baptist and, and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare the way of the Lord, whom the prophet Isaiah called the Prince of Peace. As we light this candle today, we look with hope for the day to, that Christ's peace will reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. As we light this candle, we are reminded to work for the, that peace of Christ to come and take root in us. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of peace you gave us through Jesus. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by working for Christ's peace to take root in our family. 
We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The reading concerning the manger comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The manger, or creche, is placed as a reminder that Jesus Christ was born in the humblest of places because humankind would not make room in their heart to hold the Son of God. Jesus, who was born in this most modest beginning, has compassion on all God's children, from the humblest to the richest.
This reading regarding Carolyn, caroling is from Psalm 96, verses 1 through 4a. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. <clears throat> the singing of carols is one of the greatest joys of the season. Please remain seated as we sing the carols listed in your bulletin. Well, we changed that. You need to stand, please. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, we're doing three songs, so we'll try not to rush through them. Um, and O Come All You Faithful is 234, not 324. So if you'll stand, we will sing uh, one verse of There's a Song in the Air, one verse of Angels from the Realms of Glory, and verses one and three of O Come All You Faithful.
be seated. And let us pray. God of light and love, your prophets call us to prepare for your coming and to open our hearts to all who seek compassion and relief. Too often we close our ears to cries of pain, closing ourselves off from the healing power of kindness and love. Your messengers call us to straighten the paths of all who might stumble and to make a way in the wilderness where there seems to be no way at all. Too often we close our eyes to the sight of those in need, fearing that justice for others will bring loss to ourselves. You call us to bring light into the shadowy places and to be messengers of your coming into a world of death and despair. Forgive us when we are unwilling to bear your light, when we close off the paths of our hearts to those who are in need of your good news. And let us pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you for hanging in there with me today. I appreciate it. I'm kind of stumbling through myself, so we'll stumble through together. Um, <clears throat> at this time, if you have any uh, parish notices that you might want to bring forward, and I see Deb's got her, Deb Rickard's got her fanned up there. Our Wednesday, um, study group decided to um, have the, um, give the church members the opportunity to have um, gift tags at once again for children in our community. So this morning there are 15 gift tags uh, located on a small tree. Um, as you leave uh, the sanctuary, the tree is on the right side. Um, the the gifts are for children in the area. And there's some suggestions on the tags. You don't have to buy everything on the tag, just one gift. And if you would bring the gift back unwrapped by December 19th, that would be wonderful. These gifts are, um, are distributed uh, to the families through the Caring Kitchen. And if you have any questions, just give me a shout. Thanks. Thanks, Deb. And one more uh, reminder, as I spoke last Sunday, we are collecting jars of jelly that will be uh, put into food boxes for families in the community that need them. Um, the Caring Kitchen can get peanut butter, but they can't get jelly for some reason. So we're looking for 500 jars of jelly. <laughs> That's a lot. There are quite a few out in the narthex already. We thank you for your contribution of those. Uh, but a few more would help by the 13th was the deadline when they want to put these boxes of food together. Thank you. And one more way to serve. On Monday, December 13th, it's our church's time to help make lunches and serve lunches and make bag lunches at the Caring Kitchen at the First United Methodist Church. 
and we need at least seven people to help with that beginning at 10 o'clock in the morning. If you can help at all, please let me know. And we have for sale out on the other side of the narthex a whole lot of the Rada, really sharp, really nice stainless steel knives and a couple forks and spatulas that um, the money that we, the money that comes from the sale of these will be used for the general fund. So come and Christmas shop. Thank you, ladies. It was nice you all sat close together there. <laughs> Anything else that we need to announce? All right. If not, we will go on to our offering prayer. Let us bow our heads. Emmanuel, God with us, in gratitude for the mercy you showed our ancestors in faith, and in thanksgiving for your holy covenant with all your people, we offer you these gifts and offerings. Amen. The fifth reading is from Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 3a, 4a, and 5 through 6. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. But he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. 
We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For Christians, this passage from Isaiah reflects the suffering of Jesus, who saved us from our sins by his death on the cross and by his resurrection from the dead. In ancient times, holly and ivy were considered signs of Christ's passion. Their prickly leaves suggest the crown of thorns, the red berries, the blood of the Savior, and the bitter bark, the drink offered to Jesus on the cross. As we think about the holly and the ivy, let us rejoice in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You can find the song on your insert in your bulletin. The Evergreen Tree, from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 and 4. But you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from ancient days. And he shall stand and feed his flocks in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. In ancient times, the cedar was revered as the tree of royalty. It also signified immortality and was used for purification. We have placed this tree in the sanctuary as the symbol of Christ, who reigns as king forever, and whose coming will purify our hearts. If you would please turn in your hymnals to page 250, Once in Royal David City, and we will sing verses 1 and 2.
And our last reading is the tree lighting, John 1, verses 1 through 5, and verse 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. In this time of Advent, Advent whenever you see a lighted tree, let it call to mind the one who brings light into our darkness, healing our brokenness, and peace to all who will receive him. May these trees, arrayed in, arrayed in beauty and splendor, remind us of the life-giving cross of Christ, that we may always rejoice in the new life that shines in our hearts. Could you please stand and join me in singing Joy to the World, page 246, all four verses. Let us receive the benediction as we await the coming of the promised one. 
May your love and knowledge and insight overflow, that you may live in peace and harmony with all beings for the glory and praise of God. Amen. <laughs>